Hello, hello everyone. Are you bootloader on Udemy platform? We will do some a glance over the source code, how it was compiled and how it was generating the binaries. Basically, that we can able to see here. Yeah, here we have different directories api and then arc api is the one which contains small apis of network display and storage related apis basically and arc is the one which contains cpu architecture specific files basically here we can see that ls architecture it's almost around 10 architecture it supports something like arc something like arm something like avr32 and blackfin and m68000 and uh, microblaze and mips and then we have nds32 nios2 and then open risk and we have power pc sandbox spark and x86 all those architecture cpu architectures are supported for example, if you wanted to do anything with respect to architecture specific change, those files will be present inside this here. Maybe we can see, I am going to see that ARM architecture ARM, so that we can get that information, something like different things. Over here, I am we got that into the architecture ARM folder. In the ARM folder, we will be having different kind of architectures, something like uh, 8091 from the Atmel and uh, BCM2836 from the Broadcom and DaVinci from uh, TI and we have Keystone and we have Kirk and we have Tegra and from NVIDIA and uh, different things are available over there that we can based on our platform for example our platform is having something like uh, i.mx solar x processor which we can able to see here inside the CPU we will be having something like our version is ARM v7 as we uh, gone through in our previous session we can go into the ARM v7 and we will be having some files here which is more specific to that more generic to that uh, um, ARM v7 architecture and we have some files with respect to our SOC which is MX6 in that we have that information something like DDR controller configuration, clock configuration and uh, SOC level configuration all those things are present here for example if you open DDR.C then it does that IO, uh, DRAM IO configuration for Solar X processor here which is our own thing that we can able to probably play with that basically and we have other or other file or other folders something like this maybe I can move me here and there so that it can fit and board it's is the directory which contain or were board specific files for example here we can able to see inside the board there will be hell lot of boards available that is supported by the U boot here we have that board our board is you do in that we have different boards in the Udo we will be having Udo Neo, Udo Quad and Udo S8 and we do B08 kind of uh, different boards are available from the Udo uh, distribute Udo manufacturer itself and we are having that Udo Neo and we have that files which are all specific to our hardware boards basically we have something like Udo Neo is the, our platform and you can check you do neo.cfg which contains that ddr all the clocks and ddr related configuration if you wanted to optimize the ddr or enhance the ddr we have to play over here with we have to check with the i.mx data sheets and what is the bit we have to change to get more performance <laughs> maybe it should not affect that it should not get boot basically that we can able to see one by one that if for example if you are uh, use uh, the if you are developing a new board which is based on you do new platform 
and uh, your DRAM settings are get changed you are using a different DRAM in your board you need to change it over here and uh, with respect to the DDR RAM setting DDR say uh, DDR you we are using and in our new board basically that we will go forward with one by one and we have the next which is common which is CPU or board independent files basically it's something like yeah, you would commands for example the commands will be common for all the boards all the CPUs all those things it is something like it's also independent from CPU it's also independent from board it will be generic and common to all the CPUs and all the boards and it has it is present inside the uh, common folder and we have we can see what are all the files we can see here maybe you can do ls ls common it gives that all the different commands something like whatever be the command we see in fat fat load and fat ls all those commands will be present in command underscore fat dot c something like this maybe that i mmc here and we have something like usb here we have something like version here we have something like a miscellaneous here we have something like mem memory commands here all those things are present difference upon which is something like it is cpu or board independent files basically and we have something different one then configs configs have that hardware board configuration file that will be used as a uh, as a configuration to compile that you you bootloader and we can see our configuration over here maybe a vim configs and you do new def config yeah this one something like config spl that we have first stage and second stage bootloader we that's why we are making that uh, thing something like config spl is one yes and we have that text extra options and our architecture is config arm and our target platform is you do a new target platform and we have the dm and the thermal based uh, settings over there that we can able to with that we can able to get that which is more specific to that board and it uses that uh, the some configuration from i.mx6 I itself over here that imx common and uh, spl underscore sd dot cfg basically here then we have some files which is uh, related with a disk it contains the disk drive related files and uh, sorry here some mistake drive related disk re drive related files handles that uh, disk partitions we can see here that what all the files and something like this we have that different files which can able to do the partitions and uh, read the partitions over there we have that uh, dos partition we have amiga partition we have that efi partitions to read we have that iso partitions to read we have that uh, mac based partitions also it supports it depends upon our needs basically that we can able to enable or disable that component so in order to minimize our uh, for example we have that uh, partitions uh, we have freezed our partition something like it's some embedded system is something like freezing to our needs if suppose we are freezing our needs to the fat file system only then you just we can just enable only the partition of dos based one we can skip that other things by configuring that uh, respective configs basically and we have so that we can able to achieve the uh, space over there and we have the doc folder which contain bunch of readme's associated with the CPU, SOC and peripherals like LED, GPIO, all those things that we can able to see over here in the uh, doc folder maybe. It contains different readme's like uh, ARM64 and uh, different ARM, the ARM caches how it was used, ARM memory map and uh, ARM relocation, all those things it was being handled provided with a bunch of readme's informations basically inside the doc folder 
and we have drivers folder which supports various device drivers supported by the bootloader maybe we can see here what all the device it supports and something like drivers we have that BIOS emulator we have block driver to read that uh, uh, MMC or USB based flash drives and we have the boot count and we have the core drivers and we have the crypto drivers we have the DDRAM drivers and we have the FPGA and different drivers are available here maybe depends upon our need we can select add our components into it and we can able to explore over there maybe in order to select the different components we can use that here that make menu config and you can able to do that depends upon the need we have the device drivers and we can able to select the drivers whichever we need it basically yeah and we have that examples folder the examples folder contains some of the small kind of examples maybe we may not be required it uses that uh, the example something like how to use that bootloader apis basically and then we have yeah yeah we have other files folders uh, we have different directories here something like fs which handles that file system related files maybe it contains so a uh, bootloader supports uh, limited file systems uh, which contains something like we have that uh, the cbfs and we have gramfs and we have ext4 and we have fat and then we have jffs2 and we have riserfs and ubfs and yafs2 and zfs those kind of file systems in our here we will supporting only two file systems here one is fat and next one is ext4 something like we have to use that but the FAT file system used to have that uh, uh, the kernel images and the ext4 file system will have that uh, uh, information something like root file, root file systems ext4 is our root file system that he, we are using over here and if you wanted to add some more file system you can enable the configuration so that it, it can be available to you and we have include folder which contains uboot loaded common header files that can be used in all the files so that it will be available and we have blip files which contains cpu slash board independent library file that will be hand contains and we have license folder which contains that uh, uh, information about that uboot loader license and we have network which contains network supported driver and that's corresponding software stacks all those things will be present inside the net folder and we can able to see here we have that thing something like it supports ARP address resolution pack a protocol and we have boot p protocol and we have the checksum for that and we have that ethernet driver for this and we have that ping which is icmp echo and reply and we have that nfs to handle NFS and we have that ARP again and we have that SNMP and we have the TFTP protocols basically over here and then the drivers basically then we have the scripts which is generally a general scripts to accommodate or uh, accomplish something like several sequence of commands has to be executed in sequence then we can use the scripts to play with that basically and we have the SPL folder which contains first stage bootloader optimized first stage bootloader and we have some test utilities inside the test folder and we have tools something like MK image or something like uh, we can use IM uh, create all the image create all those kind of uh, build utilities need build tools needed for or needed by the host will be available inside the tools folder basically and we have that some some more thing something like tips of porting here to your new new hardware maybe you have to play with that configuration which is present in the configs directory and we have to play with that ddr sdram which is present in the board directory and you do you do you do you do neo and then over here and we have can play play for example here vim 
board you do you do neo and then we have that this one to configure this dd ram to your need and we can have it something like board you do you do neo and then we have neo.c which contains that uh, the uart that is serial port serial console based configuration that which pad of i.mx solo x that has to be configured so that it will work as a uart that those things are not only uart all the initialization of different peripherals will be done over here if if you are changing your board based on you some reference board you have to change it accordingly to get it working basically and and then we have serial consoles maybe we just we will just go through that where the system will boot uh, from where the system will boot we will see maybe we can see here architecture arm and then we have cpu we will be having something like a file called arm v7 in that we should have that start dot s which does the starting point of you do neo arm architecture based platform here it will start with the reset vector and it does that uh, low level initialization something like cpu critical initialization and uh, in critical cpu initialization and those things and it will do that and it just this does the low level configurations for the i cache and d cache all those things and it will does that next it does the low level in it and then it will move that uh, uh, content from uh, uh, that it moves the content from the storage device to the ram and it relocate the content and it will start the executing from there basically yeah this is some small glimpse of source glance over here maybe you can contact me at nvhariharan dot at nivitech dot com thank you for watching subscribe for more updates thank you have a nice day